Hi there, my name is Cynthia Wakio, and today Paminas is going to be sharing the four lessons he learned from his first job interview. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Cynthia. So tell us more about your first job interview experience. Yeah, so I'll not tell you about my first job interview because I can't remember. So what I would share with you is my, my most memorable job interview. Okay. And the reason why it's memorable is it was because it was in the start of my career. I was young. I think I was around 23, 24 years old, um, just after campus and here busy looking for a job. So those days what used to be happened, what, what used to happen is that uh, come every Friday, we'd buy the Daily Nation and the back of the Daily Nation, you'd have like these 30 pages advertising jobs. Uh, I know when I say that, people look at me and say, well, this is a very old man. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. you'd be surprised. It's actually just 10, 10, 12 years ago. Oh. Yeah. So, so I went, uh, bought the Daily Nation, and there was this international NGO who were looking for graduate project coordinators. I applied, and they called me for an interview. Now, part of the requirement for this NGO, it's one of the larger NGOs. They are still... Uh, operating so but i'll not mention the name just just in case the hr is watching eh? yeah so i applied and one of the key requirement was they needed you had to be a practicing christian not just a christian but a practicing christian so me i missed that one cynthia so come the day of the interview they call me i'm very excited i do i do the usual homework you know i look at the location uh, I remember even going on Sunday there, I saw oh, this is their office. But I never paid attention to the requirement. But now come the day of the interview. So I go, I try and wear my best suit, you know, looking sharp. I go, I attend, uh, I was there 15 minutes. I re you know, I was ticking the box in terms of the advice that we are given when it comes to interviews and how to ace the interviews. But now shock on me. When I enter the room, tell me about yourself. So I tell them uh, who, I, who I was. But now the next questions that were followed, they were all about the Bible and the Christian faith. Now me, uh, I think the last time I was in church was like four years. So they would tell me, tell me about uh, your most popular verse in the Bible. I remember telling them John 3.16. <laughs> I think the only verse that any common person knows out there. And so let me just say it was quite terrible. And here you are, they never asked anything about uh, my qualification. It was 70% of the interview was about the Christian faith and who I was as an individual. Because remember, I was a fresh graduate. They knew that, uh, there isn't anything else I was offering in terms of skills. In fact, they were looking to train it for you to be a project coordinator. It was a two to three year program where they would train you. Yeah. So... In short, I mean, when they wrote back two weeks back, uh, I wasn't surprised. Uh, they just thanked me for my time. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, but yeah, memorable because when I look back, uh, the signs were there that uh, it was not the job for me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's like those uh, 12 years ago yes it's many years ago it's actually not 12 years ago i would say it's uh, how many years close to 16 years now 16 years yeah ago. so it's not something of yesteryear yeah yeah but the lessons <coughs> you carried from that job interview that apply today yes so tell us more about that yeah now that my current job involves uh, interviewing and i would say for the last 10 years i've been able to interview more than 5,000 candidates and I would say some of the things that I did back then, the mistakes I did back then, I still see candidates making even now. And so what are some of the lessons uh, I would say I took from there? Number one is prepare, prepare, prepare. And here you don't just prepare. You know, if I call you for an interview, most people, what do they do? They go on the internet and they Google digital marketer, question and answer. There's nothing wrong with that. But I tell you, if you focus on the job advert, what the employer is looking for. You already be 60% there. Then if you focus on what you've done, your CV, 90% of the questions revolves around the job description, which is from the job advert, and what you've done from the CV. Yeah. So if you master those two, you are 90% there. Yeah. So that's number one. Uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. 
Number two is uh, tell the truth. There are instances where you'll be called out, either because you don't know or because something is not clear to you. So if you find yourself in such a situation, don't try to be smart. You know, just acknowledge, accept. If you don't know something, you don't know. Because there's nothing as bad when someone really can tell you don't know what you're talking about. And yet you are here, you know, Naweka Surangumu, and you try to convince the people that um, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, so in instances where uh, maybe you don't know something, you've never done something, why not just admit? So for example, for me, in my case, the minute I knew now the interview was about the Bible, what could I have told them? I can tell them, yes, I'm a Christian, but unfortunately, I don't attend church as regularly as I should. So that's why, um, you know, I'm not as current as I should be. And what would have happened? Either the interview would have ended there or they would now have shifted the, the, the interview. Because I believe I had the qualification, what they were looking for. And uh, I was really committed. I wanted to work for an NGO. So for me, I felt it was a good fit. It's only that I missed on one of the key requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other one, and this might sound contradictory to my second point, is um, act confident. Even if you, sometimes you don't know. Why? I'll tell you. That in, um, when it comes to an interview, an interviewer decides on whether you are going to the next stage within the first 30 seconds when they meet you. So the way you walk in, the way you package yourself, the way you answer question, your body language, all that sends a message. Are you confident? Do you know what you're talking about? If you don't know, I, I mean, are you, are you open? Are you able to communicate? Yeah. So that really matters. Acting confident, even sometimes when you don't feel like it, because obviously the nature of interviews is you're being put on the spot, so you obviously feel the nerves, and that's okay to some extent. But you've got now to, you know, in a way, tell yourself that self-talk that what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is they don't take me up. By life, you still continue. Yeah. And the last one is uh, sometimes you also have to stand up for yourself. And here, the instances where you meet interviewers and maybe they want to give you a raw deal. Uh, or maybe they are asking things which you feel are not uh, appropriate for the interview. So don't be afraid. I remember there's a, there's a candidate who, just some three weeks ago, they were being given an offer letter, and uh, here they were. They were coming from a permanent job. But now the employer-to-be was wanted just to give them a one-year contract. So the person said, no, uh, I like everything about the job. I like the salary. I like what you promised me in terms of the working conditions. But there's no way I'm going to leave a permanent job to a one-year contract. And the employer tried to say, no, within one year, if you deliver, we don't have a problem, we can extend. But the, the individual, uh, uh, they stood on their ground and they said, well, for me, I can, work, I can only work with a permanent contract because where I am, it's permanent. And the only reason I'm moving is because of ABCD. And guess what? The employer saw sense and they sent another offer letter. Now it's showing that after probation, it will be a permanent engagement. So if this person hadn't stood up for themselves, guess what? Maybe they would have reported and within two weeks, someone changes things without consultation. And that's where issues start uh, coming up. So the ability to stand up for yourself is important uh, in the sense that people are able to see, oh, this you value yourself and you do have boundaries also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd say those are the four things I learned, lessons I learned from that not so good experience yeah. when I was starting out mm -hmm. in my career. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give for someone going for an interview? Uh, something about interviews that many candidates don't know is that it's not the most qualified or the most skilled candidate to get the job. It's the individuals with, who is able to sell themselves. Why? Because the reality is, Cynthia, during the 20, 30 minutes or even one hour that I'm interviewing you, the reality is I can't be able to really know your value. So, But it's only during that, so you only have a very short window of time to be able to really bring out the value that you offer into the you you offer to the employer so interview the way i look at it it's a marketing opportunity so you pet you put your best foot forward yeah and that way 
if you understand, if you approach uh, interviews as a marketing opportunity where you're able to sell your skills, where you're able to bring out the value that you'll offer to the employer, then you'll do much, uh, much better. Yeah. So remember, it's not the most skilled, it's not the most experienced person who gets the job, it's the person who's able to demonstrate the value, who's able to sell themselves. That's the person who gets the job. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you too, Cynthia. Thank you so much for watching. For more tips on how you can pass your interview and stand out, please subscribe to the channel. Bye and see you next time.